All right, so uh, let's let's uh, get into our Bordeaux. Now we both have. Uh, now I've got I've got a left bank from uh, this. This is from the Hutman Dock. It's between uh, their their chateau is in between Saint Julian and Margot. So uh, they're they're you know kind of up near the Poyac area. And, well, I uh, think we might have neighbors here because mine's in a very similar position as well. So um, Hutman Dock. Um, now mind you, I paid. Gosh, what did I pay for this? Um, I think it was under ten dollars a bottle. <laughs> I got the opposite. Okay, this was seventeen eighty one. Now these these are like I think uh, I get the at specs if you pay cash you get a five percent discount. So yeah, this, so basically like an eighteen dollar bottle of wine. So these yeah. were nine dollars probably listed or eight ninety nine. This was probably seventeen ninety nine. But so an eighteen dollar bottle of wine. Yeah. All right, and I've got a two thousand six. So that was right after the beautiful 2005 vintage that everybody was raving about. Great um, vintage 05. So, um, and this is uh, this is uh, is yours a superior? Yeah, mine's a Bordeaux, Bordeaux superior. Right, and Born just vintage Bordeaux. Just for the people out there, all that means is just it's 12 and a half percent alcohol or more. It doesn't mean it's higher quality. It just means it's higher alcohol. That's all it means. Exactly. And it's and so basically, these are entry level Bordeaux. These are what you find at the bottom. Right. This so. is you know. So you've got your eighteen fifty five classification. So you got the five growths, and then you have these. And there's I looked them up. It was like two hundred and sixty <coughs> or so of these, and then you have your just Bordeaux. So this is yes. like you said. This is your kind of your entry level to the quality wine, the quality Bordeaux. Um, yeah, like, like I said earlier, this mine is Chateau Beaumont, um, and they started in, uh, I looked them up here, 1700 something, um, uh, where was their little history thing on the, 18, well, they, they were bought in, they cleared the land in 1772, where they drained the, you know, the, the, the swamp, basically, and, mm. uh, and then uh, 1824, uh, they planted the vineyards, and that's so they've been going for for almost two hundred years. Mm. So actually, before I go on, mine's actually a two thousand and nine vintage. It's an 09, so it's okay. almost a current release in the in the the Bordeaux, uh, I suppose the, the Bordeaux range. So O nine, um, uh, I think a prominence with. The, the lower end Bordeaux is you get a bit of stink, a bit of funk thing going on, a bit of absolutely. <laughs> I guess you know, like horse manure, um, like stable leathery, it, that really earthy thing going on. And it's it's funny. One of the one of my jobs here in, in Australia with the company that I work for is um, we have a huge amount of Bordeaux, like from the bottom right up to the you know Hot Brion and all that sort of stuff at six seven hundred dollars a bottle. It is the hardest sell that I that we can do. It's it's people don't understand Bordeaux because of the fact that it's completely different to say the Australian wine scene. The the the, the blends are the same. It's just the way they're made um, and the old the old world techniques and things. So we um, the prominent with that stinky horse crap thing going on always. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so. Kind of talk to I me. Mean, so, I mean, you're you're a winemaker. So you have you you make wine, uh, I guess, in in Australian style. So yep. what 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 is done differently? What you do versus say say yours or or mine from Bordeaux? What what is besides the terroir? Is there what is different necessarily? That's a really good question, Mark. And this is what I, I think a lot of viewers wouldn't understand is when I talk about when we talk about old world techniques, and then you got new world techniques. So Old world is basically Europe. New world is United States, Australia, perhaps Argentina, Chile. So the terroir is always going to be the difference. So a lot of these, a lot of the fruits going to be grown on that limestone or that, um, you know, that completely different soil to what we've got here. The, I guess the main difference is the actual wine making. Um, wine is not made; it's grown. Let's put it that way. So it's, it's all done in the vineyard, but the way you ap apply the technique. So basically what I do is I, I'll pick my Cabernet, um, bring it back to the winery, I'll then crush it into the fermenter tubs, um, add the yeast, uh, 
actually no, I won't add the yeast. So I'll let it soak for a day or two um, in a cold cold climate to extract colour. I'll add yeast. I'll do the punch downs to keep the you know, the skins and the juice. It'll ferment away. It's very basic winemaking, but I think it's the fact that the it's the terroir does the talking um, and the conditions in the in the actual winery. We're, we've got a very sterile winery environment, whereas in Europe. I won't say that they're dirty, but a lot of the small chateaus will tend to be, um, you know, in, in sort of dark caves or places where there's a lot of, um, uh, like, moss and it's very, very old school. So, and you would have seen it when you went to France. Yes, exactly. I mean, they, they're they clean, you know, I mean, yes. they, I mean the, the floors are clean and all that, but but the buildings are old and, and you know, looking and doing, and just over the past year, just getting more into what, what you do with wine and and understanding, you know, Brettomyces, you know, Brett, and that's what you're getting. <laughs> you know, this stuff here, you know, it's one of those things. Once it gets into once it gets into your winery, it's game over pretty much, you know. And 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 so it's had hundreds of years to infect those wineries. Where you know, if you're starting from scratch with effectively a clean room, yep. the the chance of that particular yeast um, growing and then you know is is a lot less and but you're also more you're more likely to sit there and go we, you you've seen the mistakes of others so now you can go we know that if we keep our our wineries hospital clean you know <laughs> that that we're not we're not going to get that type of or we shouldn't get that type so no, unless you introduce it on purpose but you know and, and well it's funny i didn't want to bring up retanomyces um because for a lot of people here in Australia, it's it's the don't use that word. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's bad. It's a dirty um, word. I, yeah, it's a dirty word. I I had it in a winery where I used to work for the Melbourne University, um, and they've got an, an agricultural campus just not far from here, and we had barrels that had Britannomyces in it, and it was almost the dirty word. But however, the Frenchies, um, it's a part of their it's a part of their makeup. It's a part of their a part of their the flavour profile of their wine. So. It's, and that's the other difference between, say, modern and old world is that they've got bacteria, yeast, diseases like Britannomyces, whereas you would not see a skerrick of those in our in our wineries here in Australia. Yeah, and and I'm one of those people that that likes a little bit of Brett in my wine. You know, yep. do do I want it overwhelming? No, but you know, I I find I like I like the funk. You know, I, I like that. It's. You know, I don't, and, and and for people that maybe aren't quite getting, maybe they've they've never had the funk wines, or they've only had New World. It's not like you taste shit in your mouth, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not like Trust I me. just grabbed a, a you know a cow patty and went oh, like that. But you know, there's there is that quality to it. It's like it's like you know New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and cat pee. You know, it's it's that's it's there. You know. But it's not like you know. It's not like you're drinking it. It's just it's just part of it's part of what makes that wine that wine. You know exactly right. And that's exactly right. And that's the same as Bordeaux and Australian. And uh, that's uh, they've got their own little um, I guess idiosyncrasies that make them what they are in their own particular own particular country. Um, the Chileans are different again. They've got a different character for their cabernets. Um, they're and this no offence to the Chileans. I find that to be the, some of the cabernets that I've had it. They've almost got like a a burnt rubber thing going on in them. Um, and it's you know maybe I need to expand my palate with Chilean ones, but that's something that I get as a broad broad sense. But I guess what, what I want to make clear is what we're talking about, especially to the to our viewers, is what we're talking about aren't negatives in 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 the wine uh, the styles. All they are is basically, that's what they do. That's how they make it old world. That's how we make it new world here in Australia. And I guess that's what makes the differences between us, you, and you know, and Europe, I suppose. Right. You know, and uh, man, that battery didn't last at all. That's why I got tons of them. But anyway, um, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something that people need to understand is that... Um, there is that big difference, and they you know, they keep talking about old world, new world, and what is that? It, it really is a style of, of making and a style of, of wine, and you know uh, it, it's it's something that uh, um, is evident when you when you drink new world versus old world wines. And like you said, it's yeah. not that it's a negative. 
Um, some people just don't like it. I mean, some people don't like that funk. They, it's, it's, it's too much of a put off to them. Yes. Um, and right now, like with this wine, um, it's still there, but it's, it's not as strong as it was when I first poured it out of the bottle. You know, now it's more subtle. So if I gave this to somebody now and didn't say a word about funk, you know, and they, they smelled it, they might catch that little whiff, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like a turnoff necessarily to them. Yeah. You know, whereas when I first poured it out, it was just like, I was like, man, I bet you he smells the same thing I am. And we're, you know, we're, <laughs> I mean, it's two different chateaus, but they're, they're, they're basically neighbors. They're going to have similar styles, you know. You know, maybe their recipe is different. You know, like I, I don't know if your bottle actually has it, but mine actually has their the formula back here. They've got fifty three percent Cabernet Sauvignon, forty percent Merlot, four percent Cab Franc. Yeah, for Cab Franc, I freaking love that thing, and three percent Petit Verdot. So they've got four of the five that you can use. You know, and yeah. and they they actually labeled how much. You know, most of these wines don't do that, especially Old World. They don't necessarily do that um, on there, but uh, you know, it's it's a matter of you know they've got their little recipe here. Your, yours is could be I don't know it could be seventy percent Cabernet Sauvignon and thirty percent Merlot, and that's all they did. You know, I definitely know that there's Cabernet Cab Franc Petit Verdot in mine, but mine doesn't. When I bought it, it had it. I don't know where it had it, but it didn't have it on the bottle. It had it somewhere else, but it doesn't actually say. But you generally got the you, you generally got the the idea that left bank is predominantly Cabernet. Right bank is predominantly Merlot, and it's then it's just blended away with some other bits and pieces. Exactly, and that's where you know you have the, the, where I find the people that that sit there and they badmouth Merlot, but yet they they they'll drink some for Saint uh, Centimillion, and you want to pull <laughs> them aside and go, you know, it's Merlot, right? No, it's not. It's Bordeaux. <laughs> It's Merlot. <laughs> that's a, that's that's another argument for another. That's another discussion for another day. When uh, yeah, it's, it's it's understanding what they what they're drinking. And Mer, and, look, and look, there's no denying the fact that since sideways, yeah, <laughs> Merlot's been on the downer. And funny in Australia, at well, not as many people in the US as uh, sorry in Australia's US saw sideways, but Merlot's kind of third, like a distant third. There's you know, there's Shiraz, there's Cabernet, Shiraz, right? Probably Pinot uh, will overtake Merlot, and then there's the blends, and then there's Merlot. Sort of, well, I would say, come a distant six. It's not as prominent um, a variety as what it what it once was. And I don't know whether it's a fashion thing or I, I right. don't know. What people, I don't know. Well, what I'm it gonna, is, but yeah, Merlot um, struck here too. I'm gonna change this. Like, I'm gonna keep plugged in because my cord will will carry all the way to where I need to go. You know, and, and I agree with that. And for me, you know, honestly, when I, when I'm out at the restaurant or I'm out, at, you know, out and about, and we're talking about wine and and people are talking about what they like, you know, honestly, they like Merlot. I mean, Merlot is a, I think, is a great grape. Uh, it's a great a great wine for people to kind of get into a little more because it isn't so much in your face it's mm -hmm. it's it's definitely a lighter style it's not yep. it's not something that you're going to um uh get kind of i get not put off but like it's not gonna it's not gonna surprise you and shock you as much as like drinking a cab or a zen um so i think i think merlot is that is that great transition wine you know pinot noir I, see pinot noir is one of those wines that's, it's really light and it can be a transition wine but i the problem is i think the the qualities of Pinot Noir are gonna be lost on somebody like they were on me for a long time. I was like Pinot Noir, it's 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 thin, it's no flavor. There's nothing great to it. Why do why does everybody think it's great? You know, and it's only been the past couple of years I've really started appreciating for what it is because it's more of an elegance, yeah. not a it's 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 not a powerful thing. You know, no, exactly. Um, and but I think Merlot is a great thing because it has that extra bit of it kind of balances. A bit of silkiness and elegance with a little bit of power, and you know, if, if I put a Merlot based wine and a Cabernet Sauvignon based wine in front of somebody who's not like a wine connoisseur, they're probably gonna like the Merlot better. Agreed. Um, funny as a as a selling point, the, the, the female the female demographic here in Australia, if they're not drinking sweet wine, they'll go for Merlot. Right. It's just that's what they like. They like a Merlot because there's there's almost a perception that Merlot is a bit sweeter. But it's not. It's still a dry wine, but it's just not. 
as heavy as your cabs and your, and your Shiraz is a bit smoother, spicy, right. smoother. And they're they're probably getting the fruit. You know, when I talk to my staff, yep. they're like, well, they, they want a sweet wine. I'm like, well, we don't have any sweet wines. Okay, well, yeah, we did. We have a we have a Moscato and we have a we have a, a Riesling, a sweet Riesling. But I said we don't have any sweet red wines. Well, they want a sweet wine. Okay, well, I'll go talk to them. You know, and, and I'll go to them and say, well, we don't have a sweet wine, but you're looking for something that's kind of fruity, right? And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay. Because that is a classic thing. I don't, I, I don't want something dry. I want something sweet. Well, your average consumer is looking for something that's fruity, not, not mineral or earthy. And, and, and that's where, you know, the terminology, we as wine professionals, we, we know the difference. But somebody who isn't into the business, they just know sweet and dry. And that's, that's how they... Yep how every wine is, you know? Exactly right. It's exactly the same problem as I have here. Oh, look, it's not a problem. It's just the, it's an education thing. And, and people are getting better. People, are be, especially here, people are becoming a bit more wine savvy because of, um, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of emphasis on home cooking and don't buy takeaway. Cook at home and have a glass of wine. Match, you know, that whole, the whole spectrum, the whole concept of food and wine. So people here are becoming a bit more, um, open to, um, you know, to, to, to better Merlots and things like that. Right. Not so sweet. Right, yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, uh, for me, you know, I, I, I get the, the funk is a little bit gone now, um, but it's definitely, it's definitely minerality driven. It's earth driven. Mm. You know, there, I've got the fruit going. Uh, I've got, but I, I'm getting that, that earthy, a little bit of earthiness, maybe a little bit of leather, tobacco. Yep. Um, uh, I get the gr little green pepper. That's the cap franc finally going. Hey, I'm here. Um, exactly. You know, and uh, uh, you know, I think this is a good balance. It's got a nice finish to it. Um, the the tannins are probably a medium ish, maybe a little higher than medium. They're definitely uh, to me. This is the most tannic of the three wines that I, that we're having, um, and it's also the oldest. So that tells me that if I had say a 2009 like you have, um, mm -hmm. it, these tannins might have been a little bit too powerful. You know, if, I'll, 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 I'll agree with you on exactly what you've said. One thing I want to point out is the minerality. What I find on this is very chalky. It's, it's almost like limestone thing coming through. I get a bit of the, like a chalkiness. Um, for me, the, the tannins on this are too big. They're, 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 big, they're big and up front. Um, so hence, you, you put it away for a couple of years and just say, hey, now I've got a six pack box of this, or I did have anyway. and. I'm happy to leave this for at least three years and just let, see, let it round out a bit. It'll probably become a bit more funkier with a bit more brett and all that sort of stuff, but that blows off. Once you give it a bit of air, that'll blow away. Right. And it's just a very, very good wine. Yeah, I think, I think you know, if, if somebody's looking for something that's, you know, Bordeaux and, and they want to they want to look at this, I think it's, I think it's just fine. When I had called and they, they told me, yeah, they have it, and the woman kind of said, well, it's a 2006. I was like, that's fine. You know, I, I was kind of hoping it wasn't going to be, you know, 2010 or something like that or 2000, yeah. you know, I, I was kind of hoping it was going to have a little bit of age to it. Um, also, wasn't really concerned how old it was, just it was going to have some age to it. And, uh, you know, that's that's something to kind of remember with, with especially with these wines, is that age is, is pretty good. You know, you don't necessarily need the, the latest and greatest, whereas maybe New World wines, having that one to three year is, is okay. And yes. I'm not saying you can't do one to three year with Bordeaux, but old world tends to want a little bit more, a little more exactly. aging. It's funny you should say that. Um, is it in Australia here? We we release. There's a really big consensus on wineries releasing their wines really, really early. Um, one to move because we've we've got a glut of wine here in Australia. So obviously to move wine out and put it in the, into the stores. Two to make um, basically cash flow, instant cash flow by having. Having like 2,000, in fact, I can tell you for a fact that on the stores now, in the stores now, there's a cheaper, a cheaper brand of wine that I have 2,012 Cabernets and Shirazes out on the, on the, on, on the shelf um, for every, it's their everyday drinking, but they're 2,012. Wow. And they sell. <laughs> they're only like four bucks a bottle, almost like the four buck chuck, but right. they pump them out now. They do a little bit of a, a technique in the um, in the winery in the cellars called micro -oxygen, micro oxygenation. So what they do is that in these tanks, they'll they'll infuse it with um, dosed uh, oxygen to onset the aging process to make it a bit more drink you know, drinkable straight away. Um, and there's a huge market for that, but it makes me sick to see 
current vintage wines, reds into the store. Whites, fair enough. Sad Blanc, Chardonnay, but reds. But that's the way wineries need their money. and they, they spend their money and they want their money now, so. Yeah. I mean, it's something that, I mean, these, these are businesses. You know, these are, and, and, and people are, you know, they're, they're here to make money. They're here exactly. to make money. The, especially, you know, your, the larger corporations, they're not here, they're not making the wine just because they feel like it and it's a little, it's a little project of love. It's, it's, they're here to make money. And, and that, that's what they're going to do, that's what they're going to do, and they're going to have a market for it, and not exactly. everyone's going to like it, or, you know, if they don't like it, they can buy something else, you know? That's, exactly. There's, there's so many choices out there. All right, this is, I definitely recommend this one. If you're out there buying it, go to Specs. They'll have it, or they did. At least the one up by me had it, and it was in their it was in their um, their inventory, which actually I think it's their Scott Street. I think it's Scott Street in Houston. Which when I lived in Houston, Scott Street wasn't exactly a great street to live on or to go to, but maybe that where they're at is is not so bad. But um, uh, you know they. Uh, that when you look at their inventory, pretty much from what I can tell, it's what they have at that location. But yeah. uh, I also know they said they can deliver. I have yet to order for delivery here because I can just drive up the road to go get it. But yes. um, it was nice today to sit there and call them up and say, hey, I'm, I need these wines. Do you have them? Set them aside. And they're like, yeah, just go. Just when you get there, go to the register and we'll have it for you. So you know, it, it was nice to be able to do something like that. So as far as a shout out to Specs, and, and I've never got anything bad from them. They've always been helpful when I go in there. Um, mm. So it's it's you know good good on them that they uh, uh, were able to do that and just have it ready for me when I walked yeah. in the door. So instead of me having to go searching around for it, you know, if, if I'm if I usually go to a wine shop, I just I just stand there like a bookstore. You know, I just kind of walk up and down the aisle, and I may have like an, a section that I may want to hit, and I'll kind of look at stuff. But I could stay in I could stay in a wine shop for a couple hours, just you know looking at all the labels. You know, I'm the same. It's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, Sam, we're going to go and wrap this up. We've been going about an hour, almost an hour and a half now. So yeah. uh, that's why I have the timer so I can kind of keep an eye, eye on how long we're doing. Um, this has been this has been a fun, uh, fun episode. Um, it's it's great to get somebody uh, from from Australia onto the show. We talk about you know the similarities and differences with with the wines and being able to compare uh, the notes. Um, you know you. You you're over at Saint Genevieve. I, I know because you got the Longhorn and and all that and uh, good old uh, Saint Genevieve. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, that was a great job for a, for a couple of years. That made some some pretty good money. The wine wasn't so good, but hey, it was good experience. Yeah, and I, I've had the Peregrine Hill. Uh, actually, I think I had. I can't remember which one I had, but I actually liked it. Um, but I know like the the, the straight label Saint Genevieve. Uh, they've yeah. gone away from having the Texas Appalachian on there because I'm guessing they're not getting all the fruit out of Texas anymore. Um, so I, 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 I shy away from buying that one because honestly, if I'm buying a Texas label, I want Texas fruit. And it's not anything against the Texas wineries because a lot of times they're making these wines really to kind of get their to get going for a few years so they're getting the revenue so they can have enough of their own juice and their own grapes yep. to make their own wines, but for a while they've got to, or you know, we have you know we have vintages that just suck. You know, they can't, they don't have enough fruit, so they've got to import it from Cali and New Mexico or wherever they're getting it from. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I do when I do buy wines for the show, I tend to shy away from anything that doesn't at least have Texas on the on the label, just because I that, totally that's understand the point of the yeah the point of the show is to, is to get wine. If I bought, if it's made in Texas, I want it to come from Texas, um, and not from, you know, Paso Robles. You know, okay, the juice came from there, okay, and and you're probably going to use maybe you use different yeasts over here and and you know whatever, but it's not the same. It's not Texas soil that that grew these grapes. You know, yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So, uh, but anyway, it's uh, it, it it was great to have you on. Um, uh, everybody, you know, I know, I know, you know, you're not really doing a lot. You know, you're not, you're not pumping them out like you used to with the videos. But you got to go watch this, go watch this stuff. Uh, Wine Passion TV, you can find it on YouTube. Um, I know it's on iTunes. We were chatting that it doesn't seem yeah. like the last couple episodes. I think you're missing a couple episodes on iTunes. Uh, well, I think it stopped I've, I've at like 145. Different, I don't know what I've done. I can't remember. I don't, I don't think it come up um, when I was when I was 
when I was uploading it. So I've got to check check up on what's going on there. So, um, but um, you can definitely find it on YouTube. Market, yeah, <laughs> definitely on YouTube. You can find it. Um, you gotta check it out because honestly, like we talked earlier, there aren't many people out here, especially you know one man bands doing these things um, that that you can find, and you know that you've got people like Sam, you got people like me out there. Uh, watch these shows because you're gonna learn stuff. Uh, you're gonna get some great wines out there, and I, I just I, I'm I'm honored that people even even one person watches it besides my parents. You know, uh, they they watch my stuff, but they kind of have to. No, they don't have to, but they 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 yeah. want to. Um, but anyone else, you know, watching it is just to me is just absolutely just. I'm still floored. Three years later, I'm still I'm still doing this stuff, and and I got people watching it, so um, it's wonderful. Uh, visit visit Sam. You're on Facebook too. I'll, I'll link you below. Uh, you, you got you got the Seraphin uh, Seraphin wine down there. Um, I'll link all your stuff up. So visit the website to hit those links. Um, yeah. as, and then of course, as always, with with my stuff. Stop by the website. You can link me up with all the all the social media up above. Uh, there's the donate button if you want to hit. If you want to throw me a dollar or two, um, of course the links below for for uh, anything with these wines and with Sam's stuff. And uh, hey, we're gonna see everyone next time. I'm gonna have a, another. Let's see. And actually, I think the next show is going to be Gary's show. Um, <laughs> if if it's not, then it's gonna be those other wines. But anyway. Either either you're going to see next show is either going to be two wines and, and a thing about Chianti and Super Tuscans, or it's going to be an interview with Gary and then the other thing. So um, thanks for stopping by, everybody, and we'll see everyone again next time. Just a, just a quick one, Mark. Um, firstly, when you talk with Gary, say good day to him for me. Say from, uh, well, he had a nickname for, for me. I think it was um, Aussie Sammy S. So anyway, tell him that Sammy from Down Under says good day. All right. And secondly, Thanks so much for having me on your show. It's it's it means a lot to me, and it's um, I've been sort of even, I was sleepless last night because I was a bit nervous about coming on. So <laughs> thanks so much for having me. I, it's I'm stoked um, that we've been able to sit together for an hour and a half and um, and drink some wine and 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 be on the same level. So um, thanks so much. It, it really does mean a lot to me. And it's it's absolutely my pleasure to have you on the show. Um, hopefully we can do this another time. We'll get some other wine. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe at some point you can get your wines up, up to here, and I can I can get those. Um, but uh, if nothing else, we can we can do something like this again. And uh, I mean, it, it's I just think it was great, absolutely awesome. awesome. All right, Thanks. so we're gonna stop recording. We'll, we'll chat for just a second or two. We'll stop recording yeah. uh, again, everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, like I said, we'll see everyone again next time.